Every week, ferries unload about 1,500 Venezuelans onto this dock in Cedros. That's much heavier traffic than the tiny port is accustomed to, all because it happens to be just seven miles from the Venezuelan coast. Of the 3.4 million people who've left Venezuela since it descended into crisis, Trinidad and Tobago has proportionally received the most, about 60,000, or more than 4% of the island country's population. But Trinidad has not given them any kind of legal status. Adults are not allowed to work, and children do not have the right to a public education. So they live underground, and many Trinidadians have taken it upon themselves to help. <laughs> Kelly Langdon Pascal runs a small school for children with special needs. A friend of mine came to me and he said, look, I have a group of Venezuelans and they have five children and um, the children are not in school. They can't get them into any school. I said, okay, that's fine. I'm going to register them, you know, make sure that they're in school every day. I'm not going to be charging any fee. So we're going to do healthy food and unhealthy food, right? Healthy. Good, healthy. Kelly enrolled two Venezuelan girls. Healthy. Though they didn't speak a word of English Good. and their teachers didn't know Spanish, they've learned to manage. Now Kelly is thinking of enrolling another eight. In my lifetime, I have never seen this amount of people coming into the country, hoping to make a, a new life, or, or at least to, to try to stay above board and to be able to help their families back home. Kelly also rents her basement apartment for cheap to one of the girl's parents. The Campos are a working class family that used to support the Venezuelan government until it became nearly impossible to make ends meet. Entonces para ustedes, por ejemplo, cuando sí logran conseguir trabajo limpiando una casa o en una una obra de construcción, hay que estar escondido. Ustedes cómo se sienten con eso, tener que vivir así escondido, es fuerte. Es fuerte porque tienes que vivir como asustado. Estás trabajando y estás pendiente que si viene la inmigración, viene la policía. Pero aún así, a pesar de ser inestable, mejor estar acá que en Venezuela. Sí, por supuesto, totalmente. Por ejemplo, yo voy y limpio una casa hoy. Y a veces pagan 150 tití. Con esos 150 tití podemos comprar para desayunar, almorzar y cenar. Con el salario mínimo que gana el venezolano, no te alcanza ni siquiera para el desayuno. Trinidad and Tobago may be taking in the highest proportion of Venezuelans, but it's done the least to manage them, and it's been the most tight-lipped about the crisis next door. Many Trinidadians think they know the reason. The government of Nicolás Maduro has direct leverage over their country in the form of 150 daily cubic tons of heavily subsidized natural gas. Shankar Tilaksing is an elected official in Cedros. How would you characterize the central government's response to this situation? Very, very poor. I have lobbied through uh, various um, local NGOs to the Ministry of National Security, to the Ministry of uh, the Attorney General Office, and even to the extent of the Prime Minister Office, to have uh, international agencies come and set up their, their base camp to lend uh, humanitarian aid um, to the Venezuelans, so it will be a faster process. And all they consider about is the gas deal, the government of Trinidad and Tobago declined our request for interviews. The Minister of National Security said this week that his cabinet is considering an amnesty program that would give Venezuelans the right to work for a year. But considering is not the same as taking concrete steps. And the government continues to leave the task of caring for the Venezuelans to a single nonprofit, which helps them apply for refugee status from the United Nations. We seek an asylum for the first time. That status isn't worth much to police who find a Venezuelan working illegally. Some 440 Venezuelans are now detained in Trinidad and Tobago, many of them for months. 
In January, one recorded this appeal to the outside world. Still, all of that hasn't been enough to deter Venezuelans weighing the crisis at home against a three-hour boat ride to the Trinidadian shore. Sometimes the only way out they can afford. 